Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to show you how I organize my kids' toys. I have a seven-year-old daughter, four-year-old daughter, and eleven-month-old son. And my philosophy on toys is quality over quantity. We prefer nicer toys that last longer. We prefer wooden toys, but um, I do own plastic toys. I prefer open-ended toys for my kids, things that have multiple uses. And because of what, there is such a large age difference between my youngest and oldest, almost eight years, right now we have toys separated. So in the family room, which is where we have our TV and couch and stuff, um, that's mainly where my 11 month old, because we have a baby gate over there. That's where all his toys are kept and the bigger toys like Legos, small part toys that wouldn't be safe for him are kept in our living room so we're lucky to have a big enough space to separate that and it'll look different you know as he gets older and doesn't put everything in his mouth hopefully we can have all the toys in one place my kids do not keep toys in their room the only thing in their room is books to read before bed and they have stuffed animals that they sleep with but other than that all the toys are located um, on the first level and with toys, we do toy rotation. So every two weeks, I have bins of toys that I keep in our closet and I'll switch out what toys are out. And that just keeps it so the house isn't full of toys all the time. It keeps it so they feel like they have new toys to play with. They don't get bored as easily and it systems work really well for all of us. So I'll flip you around and show you, I think we have three main areas of toys. I'll show you the first. All right, this is the first main area of toys. This is for my older daughters, my seven-year-old daughter, my four-year-old daughter. And these are the toys they have. And again, this is a setup because right now we have toys separated because of my younger son. But here's the toys we have. We have Duplos. My four-year-old still enjoys building with those. So we keep those in here. Anything she builds, she can stick up here. We have a box of books, and again, just like the toys, I rotate through our books. So the week I'm not changing out toys, I'll change out books. So we have a box of books. Right now, my daughter has her piano out with her microphone. We have fashion plates, and if you grew up in the 90s, late 80s, you know what fashion plates are. You just stick the little different plates into the thing. And you have a crayon on here and you do this and it makes a picture on it. So they've been having a lot of fun with that. It comes with a little case to keep all the little plastic pieces, which is nice. So that stays over here, because obviously that's got small parts and that's not safe for my son. <sighs> Something we usually always have out is magnet tiles, or I think there's some magnet formers down here too, with little magnetic toys that stick to each other. And we have a couple little Shopkins that they like to stick in to different things. They make houses. Again, open-ended toys can be multiple things. You always have that out. Right now we have the Calico Critters out. So this is the Calico Critter house. And this is something my daughter's had for a long time. Again, it opens up. There's rooms in it. It has lights. And right under it is the bin that I keep all the Calico Critter stuff in. Because there is no way to organize all that stuff. So when they're done playing with it, I just have them throw it in this pink bin. And they know that's for Calico Critters. This is a water toy, so it's a giant mat that you use. See the mat in here? Uses little water markers, kind of like a paint marker. So it uses these, and it's just a big mat where you fill this with water, and then you can paint colors and shapes and different things. Nice alternative to using paint for the younger ones when it's messy. So we keep that in this little waterproof bag when we're not using. Anything the kids make that they want to keep is up here. So obviously my daughter made some kind of little house thing here. She built some little Legos that she's keeping right there. 
And again, one of the biggest things I think we have is um, blocks, which we keep in the middle of the room. We have a container of blocks and we've had these forever. And again, this is just something they use to build with. So they make little houses, different things. Looks like they have calico critter stuff in there. They use their imagination, which I think is really important. And they use different toys with the blocks and they just make whatever they want to. So that is the first area of toys. All right, this is the second area of toys. And again, this is separated from my 11 month old. So this is still in our living room. So on the top is a little Lego table. This is an Ikea furniture item. So they have their Lego builds, different things they're working on. And again, my seven year old and four year old both use these. And then we have bins that pull out and this is more crafty, creative stuff. So. First bin, Legos. Second bin is stickers. Third bin is paint supplies. I think it's very important, although it's messy, that kids have access to paint supplies and crafting supplies to help foster their creativity. And again, the girls know that if they want to use this, they have to put on a smock first and clean up their area. This is things they've built that they want to keep so they don't want destroyed yet. So that's what that bin is. This is just construction paper, white paper, writing paper. This down here is a art set. It has markers, crayons, different things like that if they want to do um, crafting a different part of the house instead of right here. This is papers they're working on, kind of their like little I just made drawer. We have stamps down here and coloring books are also down here. In this big bin here, uh, we keep the Barbie supplies. So the furniture, the Barbies, and again, they just take this out. They'll use it with the blocks sometimes. They'll take out the furniture. We have a big Barbie house, but again, my son can get into that right now. So we take the furniture off the first levels of the Barbie house so it's safe and it's just stored in there. For art, we have an art easel. It's double-sided. There's a chalkboard on the other side. This is a whiteboard on this side, again, from Ikea. The little containers are from Ikea as well. So we have markers, crayons. These are paint sticks, colored pencils, blue uh, scissors, the dry erase markers, these are stamp markers. They have little characters on them. My daughter's little templates for drawing. We have washi tape for them. And again, there's the art. So this is more the creative art area. All right, I'm gonna show you my 11 month old setup. And again, we have a baby gate to separate him from the other toys. And another thing I wanna talk about is open shelving. I believe in open shelving to, so the kids can see the toys. I, you know, bins are popular and things like that, but especially with the younger ones, I like to have the option of open bins so they can see what they have and then it doesn't get lost in the bottom of a bin somewhere. So another Ikea unit, thank you. He has his green toys with his people, his little wooden people, the little Melissa and Doug stacker, another green toys plane, a car. This is his little basket of books, wooden toys, chewing toys pretty much, soft squishy toys he plays with so he can just grab this entire fabric bin and pull it out and go through it if he wants. We have a Melissa and Doug play kitchen. And again, this is something my girls have had for a long time. It's got all the little Melissa and Doug food. So this is all safe for him to play with. Again, it's all wooden. Some of it's plastic. They'll like the ketchup is plastic. And again, he can open the drawers, move the knobs. More play food down there. And then he has a little shopping cart he uses with that too. So this is more his area of toys. All right, this is the last area. This is their dollhouse. It is a kid craft, I believe. But again, we just keep furniture on the top level. 
because with my son and most of the furniture he can play with, like the table would be okay, but obviously the food would not be safe. So when the girls are done, I just have them clear the bottom two levels. And the nice thing is, I don't know if you can see, but it comes on wheels. So it can actually be moved around. So usually when they want to play with it, I just I just roll it into the living room and then they can use all the levels. But this has been an awesome addition, especially with the pandemic. The girls have lots of fun with it, make different things. It comes with the furniture. And that's what that big bin of Barbies in the other room is. That's what they use it for. And this does not obviously get rotated. This stays out all the time, but my son's toys, my girl's toys on the shelves get rotated. Oh, and on here is their Barbie Jeep, or Jeep, uh, camper that opens up and I keep it up here so my son can't get it. And then this is just miscellaneous dress up toys, play phone, a nurse's cap. There's a stethoscope down there, I don't know if you can hear it. Some doctor supplies, just a little dress up stuff. But that is their toys and how they are organized in our house for right now. So again, that's just how we organize the toys and I wanted to show you guys because it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be Pinterest perfect. You don't need a million different organizational things. Use what you have and most importantly, make the space what your kids need. Because again, this is gonna look different in a few months when my son isn't putting everything in his mouth. It'll look different in five years. Like, make the space for what you need it at that point. Don't invest a lot of money into an organizational system or go crazy with it because it'll, it'll change. The space will change as your children grow. So keep that in mind. Thanks.